Hello guys, in this video I want to discuss this question. I want uh, to answer when x squared equals to 1 have 4 roots. And you like asking what? What does it mean like x squared equals to 1 has 4 roots? I have always thought like that this equation has only one, two roots. Why? Because uh, you maybe know from your middle school, high school, from college that if you have polynomial f of x, xn plus an minus 1, xn minus 1 up to a1x, not plus 1 but plus a0. And this polynomial when leading coefficient is 1 is called uh, manic polynomial. So it's called manic polynomial. Polynomial. And we know we actually can prove the theorem by using if you work, okay, so let me, I'm not going to tell beforehand, but uh, we can show that this polynomial has at most n roots. And you're like, okay, if you're going to use this fact, it's impossible that x squared equals to 1 has 4 roots. But it's really important to, uh, like, specify over which algebraic structure we are working on. Because this statement is true if our coefficients are elements of the field. And what is the field I may be going to discuss in the next video. But basically examples of the field are either real numbers, like complex numbers. Uh, and I think you're going to stop on this one. So real and complex numbers. I can talk about also like finite field, but it's a different story, f of p. So I was going to think about this. It's, I'm going to discuss this in the next video. So we have real or complex numbers. And we know over complex numbers by using fundamental theorem of algebra, uh, this polynomial is going to have exactly n roots. But over reals, it's going to have at most n roots. Why? Because some polynomials are not going to uh, kind of split. Yeah, so over field is true. So it means if I want to, ch to get four roots, I just need to change uh, my algebraic, uh, yeah, my algebraic object. So yeah, so let's consider, uh, let's consider one table. Uh, let's make table X be your first column and let's discover when our polynomial X squared equals to 1 has 4 roots and let's consider X squared in our second column and you will figure out in a second why I'm doing this. I will take values X equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Do I need 8 one? Yeah, I need 8, 8. Okay. And my next one is going to be 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, uh, 49, and 64. Okay, and what I'm going to do, black pen, red pen discuss a uh, solution of some equation. He discusses a solution, uh, for example, like 3x congruent to 5 mod 7. And actually... Our equation is going to have four roots by using congruence relation. So what I'm saying, I'm saying if I will consider x squared congruent to 1 mod n, then I can find some n such that this equation is going to have four roots. So even if my power x squared is like uh, x squared is my maximum power is 2, this equation is going to have not like at most two roots, but it's going to have four. And let's figure out which end I need to choose. And by trial and error, uh, you can, what you can do, we can consider, uh, let, let me use another color, x square mod 8. So what does it mean x square mod 8? By definition of congruence, it means I want to find the all reminders of all these numbers when I'm going to divide these numbers by 8. So re 1 is not divisible by 8, you cannot put any integer part, so in this case my answer is 1. 4 also counts as a reminder, but since 9 can be written as 8 plus 1, uh, every uh, like integer part I'm going to tr throw away, so I'm going to left only with 1. Uh, 16 is divisible by 8, so there is no remainder, 0. What about 25? 25 is uh, 8 times 3, 24 plus 1. So I'm also going to left with 1. What about 36? 36 is 8 times 4, 
no, 8 times, 8 times 5 is 40, yeah, 8 times 4 is 32, so it's 8 times 4, 32, plus 4. So also, I'm going to draw this part, I'm going to left only with 4. And 49 is uh, 8 times 6, plus 1, 8 times 6 plus 1, and again, like integer part, I'm going to throw away, so I have left only with 1. And 64, you know, it's 8 times 8 divisible by, uh, divisible by 8. Oh my gosh, and what we got? We got that we have, uh, let's use the column, we have 1-1, one, one, 2 doesn't work. Uh, a second one, 4 doesn't work. Fifth one, uh, 6 doesn't work. And seven, uh, and fourth one, and eight doesn't work. And you can see that in this equation, uh, our solution is going to be x equals to one, to three, five, and seven. So what does it mean? If I'm going to plug in each of this number in my x square and then divide by eight and find my remainder, you can see based on this table, my remainder in all these cases are going to be exactly once. So it's one, 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 one. So this equation has four roots in congruence relations. And this is super cool. What you can do by looking uh, at this table, you can see some pattern. We have one, four, one, zero. One, four, one, zero. So it's really interesting pattern. What else you can see? You can see that all our roots are odd numbers. It's one, three, five, seven. It's also interesting pattern. So uh, if, for example, we're gonna take uh, mod uh, sixteen or like what is the next one, thirty-two or sixty-four, how many roots and what kind of, what kind of pattern we're gonna have in this case? And the last thing that I want to tell is the reason why we have four roots over in this equation over this algebraic structure because. Uh, when we calculating something like this, we dealing with rings and uh, ring uh, with rings that have this form. So this is called a ring, a ring structure. And we consider this ring structure we can either under addition or multiplication, but in this particular case, let's consider it our addition. So for field, if your equation have maximum power n. Your also oh, your polynomial. Your polynomial ha can have at most n roots, but over the ring, if your polynomial has power like two, you sometimes can have like four roots, or maybe or maybe five or six. I don't know. So uh, and I think yeah, we are. Let's finish this part. And thank you for watching.